Hi, I'm Gabby. Welcome to my channel. And today I want to talk about some things, so let's go. What do you think of my 1940s style here? <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, it's probably not as cute or as neat as I forgot her name. I did. I forgot to look it up. Um, I just I knew who, how she looks if I see the thumbnail, but I forgot the name. I didn't memorize it. But she probably um, looks much better. My hair is, is getting well. It's getting poofier. It's getting less less um, neat. I should put more of my pin right here. But yeah. But so far, uh, I can probably do it again later. I um, was kind of in a rush. <laughs> but yeah, so now I know how to do it. Probably do it better next time. Um, so yeah, I didn't straighten my hair, I just left it with my natural curls, and I just used water, so it's getting more puffier. And I didn't have accessories like she has, and I tried to put the, I do have a, a wrap, but it doesn't look as cute. I think does the clips does look cuter, but I'll probably just put one clip on like one side of my head. I don't like the two things. I don't think, I don't think about it. <laughs> uh, and what are you thinking of makeup? I didn't do a full makeup, of course, I just did the lips and eyes, as they usually do. I didn't do cheeks. But close to 1940s, right? Hopefully none of the makeup went on my lip cheeks. I wouldn't know until after. Mm -hmm. And this is a, not really 1940s, uh, but I did bought it from a thrift shop, so close enough. <laughs> so while I'm doing that, let's set the stage before I go. I won't be doing a whole video like this. You will not see my face. It will mostly be me talking over a drawing. As I said, back to, um, <laughs> but let's set the stage before that. And setting a stage is 1940s. There is a war going on, and there's a sort of shortage, shortage of everything. Not only just food, but also materials, including materials to make clothes. Hence, 1940s fashion, baby. Yeah. So while there is a war going on, there's a lot of shortage, shortage going on. Um, it didn't hit the rich people as much, but mostly it definitely affected the poor, how they dress and wear. And due to that, the rich also has to reflect it mostly morally uh, for um, uh, patriot <laughs> for patriot reasons. Not not limited, but including um, the president's, uh, the first the first lady, the queen, the princess, and so on and so forth. All doing their share of dressing more moderately. No jewelries, hair simple. Um, curls were definitely big in, in then. Um, victory, there's a lot of victory kind of hairstyles, and I'll list them all to you later on. <laughs> anyway, because I gotta look at my laptop. And yeah, and this fashion hits the world globally. This whole thing hit the world globally. Mo um, some areas more than the others, most likely, like India wasn't so bad. But they had their own things going on too. So I will reflect that and talk about that a little bit too. Um, I don't know much about Africa. I didn't get to look much about Africa, but again, I'll tell more about that later. <sighs> but yeah, so 1940s fashion and how I use that celebration to design my characters. Let's go. Okay, recording, take two. I tried to do this the first time and I wasn't very clear, so I'm going to try to be clear and precise as possible the second time around. And the character I'm starting out with is Sarah, B no, sorry, Mattias <laughs> is Mattias. And the reason why is because technically he is not the first character I designed, but he is the first character I designed with this theme in mind, if that makes more sense. So yeah. Secondly, the first character I designed um, would be Hanarila and my Mad Cal, and but this is basically the story is basically around Mad Cal's origin story. That's why I decided to start off, or yeah, you know, rewrite the story starting off with him. But he's not in this lineup, so Mattias. So we're gonna start with Mattias, and Mattias, how is he related or connected to Mad, uh, Mad Cal? He is Mad Cal's uncle, basically, um, the younger version. So yeah, we we were going way 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 back. Um, that's how the origin. I decided to write a story. The story takes place in multiple timelines, and with multiple characters is um, multiple POV, third person objective. I think that's how you use. Yeah. So now to go to the character design and more specifics, as I was saying earlier, to also get more information or. Um, explanation of how I come up with the design. 
I would have to explain a little bit about the story setting. So the story takes place basically around two mountains, on two mountains, not around, but on and around two mountains. And it's basically in the middle of a random place in the forest. However, the people in the community who lives in these mountains have no access or no knowledge of outside world. They was born and lived for a very, very long time since the first establishment of this community, this place. So, because of that, um, limited resources are limited. So they're not only for food and material, building materials, but also, of course, clothing, which is where 1940s come in. So in the 1940s, due to the war in, in America, 1930s, um, Great Depression that leads into the war, the utility clothing came into fashion. Kind of, but there was no choice. Um, there was a lot of lack of resources, and if you don't know what UT clothing is, pretty much um, garments made using materials approved by the government. Yeah, so certain garments were restricted or limited that could be used to make clothing for children, women, and men. Men usually wear military if they were in the military, but um, they also had their own restrictions. And so these are restrictions are for women's clothing there is no trimming or limited trimming in bodies and such one yeah no there's none of that there was also outside of um underwear there's no last elastic was used there was a certain length of the hemline had to be there was a certain number of number of buttons pleats width of belts had to be regulated seams collars sleeves and shirt on and shirts were also limited. These uh, for men's they were single blister jacket they could only make wear single breasted jackets no turn ups limited pockets and the material used for trousers were also limited along along with the colors which were pretty much the only colors that they had that were limited that they had resources and this is mostly in England they have been there was usually clothing in America but mostly in England um, were red blues rich brown pinks vibrant green. Yeah, that's it. Fiber green. And these had to be waterproof, color fatness, and pass the shrinking test because, well, they have to be worth the use. So, there you go. Those are what you see clothing. And then I think because of that, most of those materials will translate well into um, an area of a, a lifestyle where there is limited, where they have no access to outside things therefore they can only use and count on the things that are surrounding them in their environment so that's why I chose 1940s and it just it just clicked <laughs> for me um there were some changes I made when I came up with this concept for one I'm not limiting the colors because I want the colors to reflect the characters so I'm not limiting the colors in that way so but I would limit um the materials because well I don't think cotton grows well on mountains so instead of use um having uh, cotton dress, uh, cotton dresses or shirts, pants, whatever, what have you, they would have to be made out of leaf fiber, which is a thing. So they have, they were leaf fiber clothing instead of cotton. I do think silk will be able to get silk if they have silk bugs. So I would like, I extend it to be silk. Of course, they will have wool or if like apacas. Um, um, sh shoot, what's the other shit? What was that? Um, other. Uh, animal call that walks no drug that could go on mountains and give wool their 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 stuff is used as wool i forgot this is pacas pacas whatever it is called it's you know the empire's new groove llamas there we go llamas things like that alpacas llamas and so on and so forth they would have wool clothing made of it also on top of that another part of the setting is that there's a the top people the mountain people who live on top of the mountains and there's people who live bottom mountains people who live bottom mountains are like workers basically farmers construction so on and so forth uh, plumbers they do the hard dirty work while people on the upper bottom mountains are more like judges um, and administrators pretty much the rulers and then there's another mountain that's separate from the first mountain the other mountain which is like all priests, priests and spiritualists and their apprentices and so on and so forth. That's how I separate my mountains and that's how I design my clothes and figure my clothes for my characters based on that. So now we're going to go with, oh, one more thing. 
more idea I bought from 1940s is the what was in vogue and fashion was called make do and mend, mend sorry mend which was pushed not only by Hopper's Bazaar but even Vogue which is basically you take old materials or clothing and redo them to make new make new clothes the problem is the materials to do these clothes were not readily available like they are nowadays so a clothing materials has to be improvised one of the most um, popular things that were used to make clothes were um, feed bags like bags that used that had chicken feed in it cut and repurposed to make clothing typically for clothes and also for women women used to make their clothing on that too some more example would be like um, printed geographical map map which is printed usually printed on silk old curtains um, dresses from twill blankets were used to make coats um, and if they could illegally acquire it, parachute silk, which is why par uh, silk was also restricted. Old wool would be made from, they will take the wool apart from their old clothes to remake clothing, wool clothing for the children. Even shoes were limited, where the, because the, Use of rubber was lost, so they until 1944 they made synthetic rubber called prep rubber, which was used for make bulkier shoes. And they couldn't wear stockings, so they wore nylon, which was made in 1939 in USA, but that was expensive in um, Europe. But Americans, they could do, they may do with it. And so yeah, that's it for that. And I'm only going over England 1940s, by the way, only because. Those who live on top of the mountains wore clothing already decided to be influenced by England and American 1940s. So that's why those are going to go over. I would go over more um, fashion for 1940s, but that's I'm going to limit to that for now, as I want to concentrate on this character now and give some explanation, background explanation. Now, although the main influence or inspiration was uh, 1940s, Specifically for, in this case, from Sarah B., who lives on top of the mountains, England and America 1940s fashion. Um, it wasn't, I didn't only use that as a reference point. I did also took reference from 19, late 1900s, um, 19th century, late 1800s, and old traditional mountain clothing, like ponchos. And I don't know, it's like kind of like leather, leather jackets. But not really leather, more kind of like wool suede. There you go. Um, that's where my inspiration came from. For all these characters, um, clothing and and fashion sense. Now to be more specific with Sarabi. Now Sarabi is, although he lives on top of the mountains, he is not the most favored child, I should say. And then more about that later with the next character. But he is like... He is one of the higher crust children, but because he's not the most favored, his clothing is not always the best in quality and in size. And then when making this, I did make a, I did design him um, a year younger when he was 14 years old, because right now this is him at age 15. Right now he's at age 15, so... Which um, he started the um, story at age fourteen. He wore really baggy clothes that were had to be tightened with a slash or a fabric to tighten the shirt and pants to his body. But due to an incident in the story, he lost all his clothes. Therefore, he had to receive new ones. Now, because it's a public and it's in public, um, it would be bad if they he because um, if he was mistreated, as the whole community comes together to help them. Therefore, he will have to receive a little bit more better than usual clothing. Now, although it's usually better than usual, it is still some skipped out. For example, the pants is not really brand new. It is old pants. Although it looks newish, it is well-conditioned and well-preserved pants that were given to him by some other elder, in this, the other elder in the community that had the pants for a very long time as the pants was fashioned after 19, late 18,000s um, pants. And I decided that he would have only one in this character who would have that kind of fashion pants. Um, all the other pants in the, you will see with all the characters, have more fashion after 1920s. 1940s, sorry, 1940s. 
And then, and his pants will be made out of, I'm thinking cotton. I think because it was late 1980s, it will still be made out of cottons. And his shirt would be made out of the the leaves, the fiber leaf, um, leaf fiber shirt. But it again will not be the best quality, newest. I have also a thing that I decided to like all characters because they're when they're young. All children um, clothing are made out of recycled materials, no matter if they're up up above um and above the mountains or under mountains, bottom mountains. The only difference between the top mountains and bottom mountains is that the those who live on top of the mountains, clothing is only reused once, while those who live from bottom mountains get reused, reused material. So it's like reused twice over. Um, so yeah. So that's what Serbi has. He has only use reused once. He doesn't have to reuse twice. He does have not that bad of material again. So it's only reused once and it is reused or remade material from a bag that was used probably used for feed or whatever what have you which is why it had flowers on it because back in the 1940s um when it became popular to make clothing out of feed bags a lot of feed bags are printing like patterns on their bags so therefore i would think they would do the same here where they know that the clothing will be remade again remade um reused again to make children's clothing they will put patterns on their children's clothing well, um, whatever they will think or assume would be the next fashion, quote unquote, fashion trend in a small community. So, his shirt has flowers on it, and I decided to keep his clothing within the darker range. He definitely has uh, more of a, a darker vibe. So, he has one of the darkest palettes, I think, I believe. I gotta recheck that. Don't quote me on it. <laughs> but, yeah. So... He's also a bit abused, so he um so I try to show that he has old wounds that still shows on his neck and forehead. But and because he was misplaced or replaced because of the incident at his home, replaced temporarily in another home, he had time to heal and grow a little bit. So he would he is taller than he would be for, from when he was fourteen. And lastly, his sweater. I'm gonna talk about his sweater. Again, although it is definitely gonna be reused old sweater that um that was took apart and remade again to make his shirt. I think his father will um, argue because he's still a growing guy. He, you see, he got a growth spurt, so they won't give him something brand new. They won't give him a new, uh, new wool sweater, and uh, more about that later. I'll explain more about why he um, should or why his father argued that he shouldn't have a brand new wool poncho and unlike other ponchos his was more fitted to look like more like a vest so it was made out of less materials than a normal poncho should be made out of so and the pants does is a bit although fit him well on the waist it doesn't fit him lengthwise again that little roll spurt so yeah there you go that is Oh, and to give his um, personality because his views, he's more withheld, or at least he withheld his um, opinions and his feelings. But he does has a bit of a grudge against, more so towards his family than the community, and that will be more explored in the story. So, yeah. Now to move on to the next character. Hopefully, I do well in the first time around. So at this point, I'm just looking at it, looking at Mattias, figuring out, I like the character design, but does this character define the character? Does this look like Mattias? And the best way to figure it out is, well, to compare it. In other words, draw another character, one related to the story. And of course, I drew the exact opposite, but in the same level as Mattias, which is his brother, Serebi. And you can guess how he's related to um. Mad cow. Anyway, so with Sarabi, when I just like drew him, I want to drew, draw him more happier and brighter compared to his brother. Both of them are both high level. They're related to the person, um, high level on top of the mountain, um, status. But unlike, um, Adias, they raise the same family. Sarabi is more treated as a favorite child. He is, um, um, has the best clothes, the best things, 
um, he's more paid attention to, things of that nature. Where Maddie's is struggling, and instead of being cared for, he is caring for his family. Sort of. Well, one member of his family. And there is a rivalry or rivalry born because of that to the family. Mostly towards Sarah B, um, Maddie's side, but Sarah B also eventually leaned into it too later on. And when I first joined him, he is technically the younger brother too, by the way. Maddie's is the oldest and Sarah B is the younger brother. And again, keeping in track with the 1940s fashion and <laughs> um, mountain slash late 1800s, they're not much like 18th thousand fashion going on in Sarah B's clothes besides like I decided to draw his paw collar instead of like having his collar down like Maddie's I think he would like have his collar popped up or doesn't care because no one cares to correct him so he would have his collar up pretty much all the time and unlike Maddie's who has secondhand hand-me-down clothing or clothing made out of secondhand materials like again a bag old rope so on and so forth uh, Sarah Reese is all brand new. Brand new materials and so on and so forth. Brand new clothes, brand new materials, nothing old, nothing borrowed, so on and so forth. So, for when I was making Sarah B, um, also, so I kept his pants based off of the 1940s fashion, his shoes are also from 1940s. His, of course, cape is around mountain, cape, mountain, old fashioned, traditional mountain. Kind of poncho, but instead of like making a full one, I went to, like half, was which was inspired by one of um, a role player's cape I saw on Pinterest. So I like that. So I was like, yeah, I'll be like kind of like that. We'll show him like a bit careless, bit carefree, but also still within structure. Like yeah, I have this. I could wear this like however I want. And like, and it's not like he lacks the materials. He chose to. Unlike uh, Matthias, who doesn't have a choice in the, his materials or choice of how his clothes completely looks like. And his hair is more slicked back and short and much more brighter compared to Matthias. If I had picked like a cliche, and this is what I, when I was drawing them, I did think of this kind of, kind of thing, cliche. And when I think of like a cliche, story cliches, um, Sarah B would be the emo kid while... <laughs> Oh, no, sorry. Mattias would be the emo kid while Serebi would be the jock, the popular, spoiled jock kid. That kind of stereotype. And I feel like it fits. I really do think it fits, at least right now, for now, in their age. Uh, if Serebi... No, I'm sorry. If Mattias is 15 and Serebi would be 14, they're only like by year difference. So when it comes to materials, uh, materials of clothing... Uh, because I did include that into this, it says, well, uh, I didn't include this. Unlike, since it is brand new, he has no pattern clothing. His pattern clothing is pretty, pretty much just plain, but his colors pop again. It's the colors that brings out his, um, the, sorry, the um, newness of his clothes that shows his status rather than the colors and, or, sorry, the patterns. And you will see that more of the other kids. Well, one other. Yeah, the kids. You'll see it. The characters. When it comes to... Well, I was going with this. I forgot where I was. Um, oh, the colors. When it comes to colors, again, w Mattias has the darkest palette as of right now. And right now, Serebi has a very color like pattern. Even when I desaturated it a bit and changed the hue and luminosity. Was it luminosity? I forgot what I changed. No, what was it? Um, give me a second. Yeah, it is luminosity. Okay, so I changed the hue, saturation, and luminosity, um, to, to make it a little bit more darker and desaturated, because that is the overall theme of all well, the characters in general. They that's their color. Um, I want the color theme of the the illustrations for this story. As well as uh, the toning to be simple, like shading be simple, just really dark shading with no highlights. <laughs> so yeah. With that said, let's go into materials and um, close this out. Um, about Cerebi. So his clothes look on the simple side, but it was brand new. He wears it however he feels like or however he thinks is stylish. It's up to him. No one says anything or can't say anything. And matter of fact, kids 
will praise his because of his status will praise a, what um not only in the village but in school and classmates sort of classmates praise school whatever will praise and will most likely copy his style rather he is the leading he leads the fashion trends he leads whatever is going on that's he's leader or he's a dedicator to most of those of his similar grade and age so yeah and as you can see, unlike Thing, he is not abused. He has gets good sleep. He is in fits. He's much more fit, slightly more fit than his brother. Although, and he's much taller since he always get the best food. Is well fed. Although all of them is fed, his father, who has the power to do so, um, make sure his youngest is well fed. While the oldest, he pretty much somehow get him to have less food. Manipulate, there you go. Manipulate the office, give him less food. So, okay, now, fabric. <laughs> Sorry, it took this long to get back to it. So, yeah, fabric for fabric for um, Cerebi's clothing. The only difference uh, compared to Cerebi's clothing compared to Mattias is, like, comes down to the pants. Whereas both their poncho cloak is made out of wool. Their shirts are both made out of fiber fiber um leaf fiber only difference is while Sarah's is old and reused made out of re, uh, reused recycled quote um fabric Sarah is brand new and what comes down to the pants where Maddie's pants is loaned loaned was loaned to him Sarah has brand new pants and is made out of silk which is a I think will become a rare material in this story I'm not I'm just sure I didn't Think about it. Um, hear that yet? But I, it might be end up being one of rare materials. Therefore, it is very special for a kid to wear it, and you will only see one other kid in this lineup wearing it. So yeah. And if I didn't say this before, I'm um, just in case I'm saying it now. You will not see Mad Cal in this lineup. This is just um, a lineup of five other characters that I am now currently writing in the story. So yeah into the story so yeah um these are the two now to move on to the next one next up carol but before i start discussing and talking about her i just want to take time to talk about hair and makeup in the 1940s please be patient with me it will make somewhat of sense kind of ish anyway so the 1940s hair and fashion well beauty and hair is pretty much famously known for that era or at least I think it should be personally uh, and it's really weird how England and America had a similar hairstyles I don't know sure of like how they intersect and decide to have like similar kind of hair um, basically it's like they sell they sell they had one brain cell and it was like they just like clicked just like for them just at one time um, I don't get it but anyway yeah Maybe they, I don't know, because, like, was it probably magazines? But, like, how often were magazines being, like, ported between the two because of war? So, mm. anyway. So, let's start with, um, hair was very, pretty much important. Hair and makeup. And was very important because, well, cheap clothes were very cheap and simple, so... The best way to express yourself or to emphasize your beauty is through your, well, natural beauty, which is your hair and your face. Also, accessories was not a thing, um, at least when it comes to like jewelry, because again, war. So the uh, main, the means and the materials to make it were not readily available. So accessories were downplayed to like maybe like some kind of pearls. Or no accessories at all, or even costume jewelry. That was um, pretty much famous in the African American community, where they would wear like um, costume jewelry. But the thing is, they would not be overly fat, flashy with it because it was very um, unpatriotic to be flashy. With that said, it did not stop men, at least African American men, from wearing zoot suits, which were illegal because it was associated with 
Mexican gangsters. There you go. <laughs> but yes, but other than the jewelry, there was other accessories that were very famous and, well, not famous, popular amongst the elders, but also for some young, but mostly the elders, um, which would be like hair accessories, which is... Oh, okay, hot snoods, pixie hoods, turbans, bonnets, and scarves. Um, they would like pretty much wrap their hair up when, during work and then let it out <laughs> when they want to like go out and have fun or whatever. When it comes to younger women though, most of them like to have their, wear, their hair out, like at least in England, prefer, um, preferably in glamorous hairstyles, long, up, up, copying, <laughs> or like do similar hairstyles to their famous or preferred favored actresses like Dorothy Lamour, Luna Tainer, Anna Todd, Mark, uh, Margaret Lockwood, Celia Johnson, Rita Hood, um, Haywood, and so on and so forth. And one of some of the fewest hairstyles are actually named after patri patriotics. Well, have patriotic names. There you go. Like the Victory Roll or the Victory Bob or the Fighting Bob. And this was not only limited to white women, of course. African American and Caribbean women also limited the same hairstyles by using hot combs and lotions and then curling them up so yes and if they can't do it they still bought wigs so there you go there was a oh another one uh, hairstyles is a half up half down which I, I actually kind of like but with my hair i can't really do as well but at least that's really popular in america i don't know about england and there's also the buffet style and pumper style which was popular amongst i think Mostly Americans, I mean Americans, sorry, Mexicans, Mexican Americans, and so on. Which was the buffet style and the pumper style, which is like a half up, half down, but like puffy. <laughs> As the war dragged on, of course, getting these accesses or to these supplies that help do the hair were limited and hard to reach and hard to get and probably became more expensive. And therefore, women had to be creative in either refurbishing old supplies or modifying it. Or even probably creating their own. Um, but anyway, and it is also true with cosmetics, where women would find ways to recycle or modify their old makeup. For example, like melting down, like gathering all their old lipsticks and melting it down to make a new stick. But yeah, so cosmetic companies, of course, took advantage of it by pushing it as being patriotic for wearing makeup, literally. Um, there was even a quote, never must careless women reflect a don't care attitude. We must never forget that good looks and good moral are the closest to a good companion to put your best face forward. And that was by Yardley. They even go as far as naming their products after like patriotic names like Auxiliary Red. I think I pronounced that right, a luxury red. Anyway, and having pushing like quotes of having a clear complexion clear complexion bright lips and accentuated eyes basically they really emphasize beauty and and a lot of these were pretty much a lot of these women will again once again emulate their favorite actresses face um makeup and it was even considered good medically ish kind of how the makeup the face cream that you put in your face will protect you from toxins in from when you're working in factories there were even some factories not all pretty much i don't think there was many very few factories will even probably set up parlors or salons where women could like put makeup on before going to work to apply their face cream before heading to work at least in england i don't know anything about american doing that but yeah Granted, it was also important in America to keep up your face and hair, but I don't know if they had parlors as much as they did it had in England. Another way of recycling, just found it, is that they use rose petals. Um, for other makeups, they use like charcoal, beet root juice, and for like creams to like soften the skin, they would use like lard or slav, which mostly used by girls who works in the farms with cows. And slav is which is used to soften the cow waters. They would use that as also cream to soften the skin. Now, how does this apply to Carol? Do Carol has 1940s hair, fashion, makeup? No, she does not. Mostly because I decided that since she is young, she's underage, 
that they would be not allowed to have or have access to or allowed to use any kind of hair products or maybe because it will be even more limited for them to have these products or even make these products to even grow these materials in a certain like limited area because they also got to grow food for themselves food for other animals and then also other products they probably need um, to make and grow so they probably need other crops for other things so they can't always have for makeup so they will limit to those who are of age let's put more on of age I haven't decided what the age of age is yet in my story but she is I definitely consider her under and by the way she is the same age as Sarah be so they are the same around the same age most of them only actually I should mention this Maddie Maddie is is the only one that's older Everyone of these other characters are all around the same age. So whatever story age, the rest of the characters are. So I decided to, so because of that, she will always have a very, very messy bob. She does have straight hair and her hair here naturally curl, curls into a bob. But it's always going to be like messy and like frizzy. Nothing to contain. And I tried to deliver that. But it looks like little white lines. I think I should just made it a little heavier in the lines. But you can see it ish kind of it's there and besides that compared to her when i drew her a year younger i did have like if i was talking about cliches if she was a cliche she's the cliche wannabe princess she's not the princess but the wannabe princess she looks at the person who is the primer um prima donna and either emulated or try to beat her for her crown she's always like fighting the person that person or confront the person even if the person themselves don't care about them that is um that is um basically carol and putting her in a cliche format <laughs> like narrow her down to that but yeah and yeah she does have beef with one of the other female's characters because she, technically that person although it's not completely treated as the hierarchy she does have technically that's the the power even though she doesn't have the respect, she just, um, that person has the power and the, the status. Well, she has most or more of the respect than that person. And you'll figure out who that person is soon. Um, they are part of the lineup. This lineup. So when I was designing her, when I first designed her, I do design her like in a simple pink dress and a white shirt. I believe she is also one I feel like compared to Serebi has went and through the most dramatic Mattias and her went to so far went to the most dramatic um character design from when I drew them from year younger to now. So when I drew her to now now again, remember I'm not only taken from 94, it's taken from other places, two other references to other places. Um inspiration. I don't know how to speak, but anyway. Um I decided that she, well, her unlike her um what's Sarah B's cape, poncho, hers would be more worn like a cape, like a princess cape that will cover her where she could cover up herself or have it back behind her. Most of the time she'll probably, around a certain people, will cover it up because she's insecure. By the way, when I remember, when I remember mentioning this with Mattias and a little bit of Sarah B, how kids, underage kids, will wear secondhand or recycled material clothing. She still has that with her shirt. And her slash are made out of recycled materials because those are the only two things that are still made out of cotton, recycled fiber, not even taking the colors, fiber fabric. While her cape would be the closest thing to being something new. And since it's, instead of making it, I originally think I was going to make it out of wool. It is made out of the same suede as her skirt. So her skirt and her, her, her cape is made out of suede leather. Um, so that will be it for a little bit more of a posh and polished look to her compared to everyone else where they wear, wear cotton-ish clothing. Well, take, again, not cotton. Um, wool or they wear fiber, um, fiber texture. She has soft leather. I think she's the only character so far that has that kind of material. We're in that kind of material. Only well, same similar to Mattias, but there is another person who was wearing silk. Uh, um, no, sorry, not Mattias. Serebi. 
Maddie, uh, Maddie, yeah, well, yeah, Maddie is. Maddie is the only one who's wearing cotton. She's the only one wearing suede so far. So, yes. And I think it works well with her, and I liked it. Also, when I was designing it, well, technically not designing it, when I was applying the fabric on, I realized the, the pattern on her shirt is still a bit too light, so I really darkened it up. Also, I should also mention, because, because since she is so wearing recycled, she, of course, would have patterns on her shirt, even if she wants to emulate Sari, who she wants to get close to, who wears all plain, no, no pattern clothing. She really would like to emulate him more by not wearing. That's why she, the only way she has pattern is her shirt. But she did manage to get a not, uh, plain slash that is, that is recycled, but it has no pattern on it. So, yeah. That is... Carol, and I think I fully explained her enough to give you an idea of how she fits into the story. So moving on to the next character.